Hello everybody, this is Overboy, and I'm going to be doing my review for the 2005 movie Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. So, in this movie, it has been three years since the Clone Wars began, and Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker rescue Chancellor Palpatine from General Grievous, the commander of the droid armies. But Grievous escapes. Suspicions are raised within the Jedi Council concerning Chancellor Palpatine, with whom Anakin has formed a bond and asked to spy on the Chancellor. And full of bitterness towards the Jedi Council, Anakin uh, embraces the dark side in order to hopefully save Padme from death as he's having dreams about her death. Um, so... This movie is absolutely amazing. I, I absolutely love Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. I think it's easily one of the best Star Wars movies. Um, not just prequel trilogy, um, but Star Wars movies in general. That, like This one's probably in my top three. Um, and it's just absolutely great. And uh, I, I love seeing Palpatine transform into the Emperor. And stuff and the whole scene when he, he takes out half of the Jedi Order by himself is really awesome and everything and uh, the, the whole fight with him and Mace Windu was really cool and everything and then seeing Anakin's tragic turn to the dark side when he cuts Mace Windu's hands off and uh, the Emperor kills him and stuff and then he goes and executes Order 666 and all the clones are killing the Jedi and Anakin is killing the younglings and uh, attacking the Jedi Temple and stuff. It, it's just really emotional and really well written and everything. And even though the the Jedi's are aren't very well developed and stuff, you still feel bad for them when they they get killed and stuff like because you you see the looks of betrayal on their faces and stuff. And I, I've got to say I've been watching the Star Wars: The Clone Wars for the first time, and I, I've kind of been mixed on the show and everything, but. Uh, Rewatching this movie after watching almost all the show. I'm in the middle of season seven right now. Uh, I gotta say that uh, that show actually enhances this movie quite a bit. Uh, and I really uh, think that I'm starting to get why people like it. Like a lot of this stuff from that show that, uh, you know, happens like showing Anakin's uh, subtle dislike towards the Jedi and everything like he's starting to dislike the Jedi by the end of season 5 and everything uh, because of what happens with Ahsoka and everything is like I wish that Ahsoka could have been a part of this movie and everything but she wasn't created till after the trilogy was over but uh, but watching it after that and thinking about Ahsoka and stuff it just makes it more tragic and stuff and makes you kind of sympathize with Anakin more and everything I thought that was really cool um and everything like, like I said I, I've been mixed on the Clone Wars and I, I might review them after I uh, after I watch the rest of season 7 I might go ahead and do a review for the Clone Wars series and just talk about my favorite stuff about it and stuff and what I did and didn't like about it um, if you want me to do that let me know in the comments if you want me to talk about the Clone Wars and Rebels and Resistance and stuff as I watch them it'll take a while on them though because I'm watching them slowly like one episode a day and everything so it'll take me a while on each of them but I don't mind talking about the shows if y'all want to hear about them, my thoughts on them same with the Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett and Andor and all those I'm trying to get caught up I've been really behind on the Star Wars extended stuff um, but anyway sorry back to my review um, uh, the cast are all once again great in this I think Hayden Christensen was definitely a, a thousand percent better than he was in uh, in episode two um, and everything. I think part of it is the writing was just a lot better for the most part. Um, but I, uh, all of them are great. Ewan McGregor gives what I feel like is personally his best performance as Obi Wan Kenobi. Although I did think his performance in the show was really great too. Um, and uh, Ian Mc McDermott, uh, who plays. Uh, Emperor Palpatine or uh, Darth Sidious, whatever you want to call him, uh, he is absolutely great in this movie. Like this is the one where the Emperor really shines and stuff. You really get to see the the evilness of him and how he rose to power and stuff. And it, 
Uh, I wish that they would have done more with him in the, the original trilogy because of uh, watching this and everything, but I, I think they did did him pretty good in that, that original trilogy and let Vader have the spotlight too, so I'm not really complaining, but uh, I would have loved to see more with Palpatine in that, that original trilogy and see what he was up to during that original trilogy because we don't see him throughout most of it. Uh, I'm kind of curious what he was doing on the side, probably like he like he was doing in, in this one, just kind of sitting on the side and everything, letting everybody else do the work. Um, but uh, I think he's great and everything. And uh, the CGI in this movie is so much better than it was in the, the first one, or the last two movies um, and everything, especially episode two. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think the CGI is is pretty good in here. Um, it holds up really well, actually. For, for being a movie that came out in 2005, I, I think it holds up really, really well and everything. Um, and uh, there is some really corny dialogue, and it kind of adds a cheesiness to it that uh, kind of makes me like it a little bit more, um, just the cheesiness of the dialogue and everything. But there are times when the dialogue is just absolutely cringy, um, and everything, uh, and, and that's just this, the same negative that I had with, uh, episode two, except it doesn't bother me as bad in this movie, because it's only in a few scenes, uh, is the, when Anakin and Padme are talking about how much they love each other, and she's like, hold me, Annie, like you did on the lake by Naboo, when it, it's just our love to keep us safe or whatever is really really corny dialogue and stuff and uh, it's like I don't know how these actors could have kept a straight face saying this this corny stuff and everything um it's just really corny but um but at the same time it it it, it kind of adds a charm to the movie too like like I don't know. It, it's just kind of a mixed thing for me. But the the love stuff is really cringy and everything. But the the other corny dialogue, little stuff that's just become memes and stuff like like uh, this movie, the entire trilogy really. Uh, there were so many memes from this trilogy, but I've noticed a lot of them came from this movie. Um, but. Uh, there are so many like hilarious memes in it. It's hard to watch the this trilogy without thinking about those memes and laughing at at certain scenes and everything. And this one, uh, like when he says "I am the Senate," I think of all the different "I am the Senate" memes I've seen and everything. Like the the one of uh, Iron Man saying "I am Iron Man," and then at the bottom of it it says "I am the Senate," and then. Uh, it had Jack Sparrow saying, I've got a jar of dirt or something. And it, a funny meme. Uh, but there, there was a lot of really funny ones from this and everything. And also, uh, I mentioned in my review for episode one, a parody song that I absolutely loved. It was based on a uh, Phantom Menace called uh, Saga Begins by Weird Al. Um, there's another one. I don't know who sings it. It's uh, on YouTube, though. It's called Let It Flow, which is a parody of Let It Go from Frozen, but it, it retells the story of Anakin becoming, uh, turning to the dark side and everything. And it's just absolutely great. It, it combines Frozen and Star Wars. I just love that song. I wanted to give it a, a, a mention and everything because that, that, that video is awesome and everything. But. Uh, all in all, I, I think Revenge of the Sith is pretty good, despite some of the, the cringiness with the, the love story between Anakin and Padme. I think that this is a really satisfying ending to the prequel trilogy, especially after how disappointing Episode 2 was and everything. Um, and, and it's not just, like I said, one of my favorite pre... It's not my favorite movie out of the prequels only. It's also one of my favorite movies in the franchise in general. It's just really entertaining everything so uh, I'd go as far to say that uh, this is one of the Star Wars movies that I would have given a plus to uh, I absolutely love it and everything so uh, so yeah um, 
Anyways, let me know in the comments what you think of Star Wars Episode 3 for Finch of the Sith. Do you think it's one of the best? Um, or do you think it's just like the best prequel, but not, not one of the best movies in the franchise? Let me know. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And like I said in my review for Episode 1, uh, I want to try to say in all of them, I didn't say it in Episode 2, but please, if you're, if you're going to be a toxic fan, don't even comment. Because the, the toxic fans are annoying and everything. And, there's no need to be be so mean about it for people's opinions on liking something you don't like and everything. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and have a good day, everybody.